Taxpayer-funded NPR launches disinformation reporting team ahead of elections. I see more and more left-wing uh, uh, um, journalists and, and places like that doing this. Uh, it's, it's the way they can do, can try to slow down the red wave that's coming, among other things. I got another theory when it comes to the, um, to the red wave. You should check out my Patreon for that. But before we get started, go ahead and hit that like button, share this out so we can get this information out there. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Hit that alarm bell so you know when I'm putting out new stuff. Also, check out my link tree in the description. It has a link to my Patreon when I talk about things I can't talk about here. And there's also a link to my merch store. All right, let's talk about this news. Taxpayer-funded National Public Radio, NPR, is launching a disinformation reporting team prompting mockery online by those who pointed out the liberal network's long, sordid history of suppressing information it did not want the public to hear. Um... Uh, Molly Hemingway tweeted out, what are you talking about? You've been little other than a disinformation team for many years, which is a great point. Is in October 2020, for example, NPR refused to report on the history of Hunter Biden and his infamous laptop, which suggested that then Democratic Party nominee Joe Biden had lied about his links to his wayward son's corrupt foreign business deals. At the time, NPR tried to justify its lack of reporting on the issue in a newsletter by public editor Kelly McBride. She said, uh, the biggest reason you haven't heard much on NPR about the Post story on Hunter Biden is that the assertions don't amount to much. Come, are you kidding me? Look at, look at, you know, fast forward to now. It didn't amount, it doesn't amount to much. Look at all the information that's coming out about it now. But anyway, she goes on to say, we don't want to waste our time on stories that are not really stories, and we don't want to waste the listeners and readers' time on stories that are just pure distractions, NPR magazine editor for News Terrence Samuel told me. And quite frankly, that's where we ended up. That was a politically driven event, and we decided to treat it that way. The handful of stories that NPR has produced about the New York Post investigation have been limited to how Facebook and Twitter are restricting distribution on the story or how families of those seeking treatment for addiction are impacted by the portrayal of Hunter Biden's struggle. <laughs> it's just ridiculous on the face of it. But like other left-leaning outlets, NPR considered the Hunter Biden story disinformation, though it has proven to be authentic and that attempts uh, to dismiss its legitimacy were themselves the only disinformation right before an election. Earlier, after the 2016 election, NPR ombudsman suggested limiting live interviews of conservatives after uh, this author was interviewed on Morning Edition and challenged NPR's reporting, as well as its focus on racial content and programming. NPR's new disinformation uh, team comes just weeks after the Biden administration attempted to set up a disinformation panel within the Department of Homeland Security uh, collapsed amid public scrutiny of the views of its would-be leader. But we know they're, they're actually trying to bring that back again with um, Camilla Harris at the head of this this time. But really, you know, when, when you got Camilla Harris running things, you know it's going to go to crap anyway. But we still should be um, vigilant and pay attention to, to this, this, this this information crap um, board that they're trying to, trying to push. But let me know what you think about all this. Leave your comments down below. Like, share, and subscribe. And check out democrapublics.com for the latest in news. Until next time, peace. Oh,